Wir sind schon on, online. Guten Abend, nein, guten Nachmittag allen, die heute gekommen sind. Herzlich willkommen in der Akademie der Künste. Ich bin Caroline Schönemann, Sekretär der Sektion Baukunst und die, unsere Sektion steigt mit dieser Veranstaltung nun auch ein in das Programm Schwindel der Wirklichkeit. Eine Debatte, die uns schon seit November begleitet und dann im September übergehen wird in etwas, was wir Reparatur von Wirklichkeit nennen. Und ähm, das ist hier vielleicht der erste Versuch ein, eines Spagats zwischen diesen beiden. Jutta Brückner fasste das Programm mal mit drei simplen Fragen zusammen, nämlich ähm, wem, wem schwindelt es heute vor der Wirklichkeit? Was schwindelt die Wirklichkeit uns vor und ist die Wirklichkeit nur ein großer Schwindel? Sie merken, das ist jetzt meine Brücke zur Werbung. Wir haben uns darin eingerichtet, mit unserer Wahrnehmung, mit unserer Selbstwahrnehmung. Und wenn uns dann Zweifel plagen, dann hilft die Werbung. Mit ihrer immer schönen, heilen, bunten Welt, der zufriedenen Väter, Mütter, Kinder, Autofahrer, Brillenträger, Kleingärtner und so weiter. Wenn aber die Werbung übermächtig wird, wenn sie überdimensioniert wird, so riesig, dass Werbebanner ganze Häuser und ganze Straßenzüge verhüllen, dann wird sie zum Problem für die Stadt. Und dann ist es gut, wenn man mutige, selbstbewusste junge Bürger hat, aller Professionen, die sich schützend vor den öffentlichen Raum stellen und anderen Bürgern zurufen, tut was, lasst euch das nicht gefallen, macht was, repariert die Wirklichkeit. So geschehen in der Stadt Warschau in dieser Zeit. Ich darf Ihnen heute den Verein Miesto Morje Avnim, übersetzt etwa meine Stadt und in ihr, aus Warschau vorstellen. Dieser Verein, und wir haben zwei Vertreter dieses Vereins hier, die Alexandra Stjapin und der Piotr Manokiewicz, ähm, ist 2007 in Warschau gegründet worden und diese Initiative von jungen Fotografen, Urbanisten, Künstlern, Architekten und anderen Professionen äh, setzt sich ein für die Reduzierung der Werbung in polnischen Städten, für die Bewusstmachung äh, des visuellen Mülls in, im Stadtraum, für die Veränderung der Einstellung der Bürger auch und nicht äh, nicht ähm, auch nicht zum Schluss genannt, äh, für eine entsprechende Gesetzgebung, die das Stadtbild schützt. Ähm, Polski Autor haben wir unseren, äh, unsere Veranstaltung genannt. Der Namensgeber dafür ist dieses Buch, ähm, was ich hier nur so mal hochhalten kann. Das war die erste öffentliche ja, Veröffentlichung, äh, die, die der Verein äh, gemacht hat. Ein Buch, was dann sogar noch ausgezeichnet wurde als eines der sehr gut gestalteten Bücher. Ich glaube aber, wir werden gleich in dem Vortrag mehr davon hören und sozusagen einen Blick auch in dieses Buch bekommen. Ich möchte Ihnen kurz die beiden Gäste aus Warschau vorstellen. Alexandra Stepin ist Jahrgang 85 und sie ist seit 2012 Präsidentin des Vereines. Zum Handeln herausgefordert wurde sie, als der neu renovierte Warschauer Hauptbahnhof so mit Werbeplakaten vollgehängt wurde, dass sie sagte, man muss hier was tun. Und zusammen mit dem Vereinsmitglied Xaver Stanjek organisierte sie einen Online-Protest und äh, beförderte damit auch eine öffentliche Debatte. Sie studierte Kunsthistorikerin und sehr interessiert an der polnischen Architektur des 20. Jahrhunderts. Und ihr Kollege ist der Piotr Jan, äh, Manowiecki, Jahrgang 1980. Ich muss mal jetzt einen Zettel weiterrechnen. Dankeschön. <lacht> er lebt in Sakopano in der Hohen Tatra und arbeitet dort eigentlich als Übersetzer für Tschechisch und auch als Reisebegleiter. Und er ist seit, auch seit 2012 Mitglied des Vereins. Und die Masse schlecht gestalteter Werbung, die den öffentlichen Raum dominiert, hat ihn so deprimiert und auch so ärgerlich gemacht, dass er in diesem Verein sehr engagiert mitarbeitet. Er hat einen interessanten Wettbewerb ins Leben gerufen. Er wird gleich darüber noch erzählen. 
erzählen. Und ähm, macht zurzeit koordiniert er eine Aktion, die sich an die Warschauer Parlamentarier richtet, endlich auch äh, gesetzliche Regelungen, Regularien zu erlassen für den Schutz der, des Stadtbildes. Der Bogen zu dieser Veranstaltung und der Akademie ist vielleicht, dass äh, wir äh, diesem Verein am 18. März den Berliner Kunstpreis 2014 in der Sparte Baukunst ähm, äh, überreicht haben. Klaus Wowereit hat dann die Auszeichnung und die Urkunde und so weiter und die Glückwünsche vorgenommen. In der Jury waren die Akademiemitglieder Werner Dort und Stefan Poloni und die haben wieder einen jungen Wissenschaftler kooptiert. Das ist Arnold Batetzky, den ich Ihnen hier als Gesprächsleiter des heutigen Abends auch gleich vorstellen möchte. Ähm, Arnold Batetzky ist Jahrgang 65 und in Sapsch in Polen geboren, ist das richtig? Nein. <lacht> er studierte Kunstgeschichte, Germanistik, Philosophie und Geschichte in Freiburg, Tübingen und Krakau. Und seit 95 äh, ist er wissenschaftlicher Mitarbeiter am Geisteswissenschaftlichen Zentrum zur Geschichte Ostmitteleuropas der Universität Leipzig mit den Forschungsschwerpunkten Architektur, Städtebau, Denkmalpflege und politische Ikonografie. Er ist weiter darüber hinaus Mitglied der Expertengruppe Städtebaulicher Denkmalschutz und er schreibt, er schreibt, Sie kennen ihn vielleicht im Feuilleton der Frankfurter Allgemeinen Zeitung und hat dort auch 2012 einen, den Journalistenpreis des Deutschen Preises für Denkmalschutz erhalten. So, so viel vielleicht an dieser Stelle zur Vorrede und zur Vorstellung unserer Gäste, die ich nochmal herzlich begrüßen möchte. Ähm, wir haben uns ist das so geteilt, dass zuerst äh, unsere beiden Warschauer das Wort haben, um einen, einem längeren Vortrag Ihnen einen Einblick in diesen Verein und in die Arbeit und in die Problematik der Werbung zu geben und dass wir dann äh, ein Gespräch folgen lassen, in das wir Sie dann auch bitten, gleich einzusteigen. So, ich übergebe das Wort, bedanke mich. Well, it's wonderful to be here. <laughs> uh, I'm a bit nervous because this is my first speech in English, so please um, be patient and thank you for your understanding. Uh, where is the presentation? Did I need to? Oh, okay. Okay, we will start with uh, this picture. Because um, when we start to, when we are trying to respond on fundamental question, why we uh, tolerate outdoor, uh, outdoor advertising in our cities, we often use some cliches in our mind. Advertising as a part of city's metropolitan character, uh, supporting visions of modern dynamic city. We create idealized imaginations, such like this, uh, similar to this picture. This is obviously uh, Times Square in New York. And this practice is tempting because Times Square is an iconic place, uh, one of those which defines the way of perceived New York by tourists and other visitors. We need to see Times Square when we, when we are in New York. We need to be delighted by this microcosm of digital displays. And for some reasons, uh, this could be a positive phase of outdoor advertising. There is an area where ads don't pervert the context, Uh, of the place because actually they are a context. Uh, so where is the myth? It's uh, associated with the belief that um, how this space works. Uh, because another imagination prompt that this is a perfect chaos and uh, it has grown without any control. And nothing could be more wrong, I guess. Uh, the, ca the chaos his is, here is ostensible, is skin deep. The city mandates a certain amount of signage on each building, giving the extremely exacting signage requirements. It is a place where advertising um, on buildings is not simply permitted, but is actually required to preserve its individual character. And a little trick, because uh, by concentrating advertising in just a few districts like Times Square and Midtown, the Department of Buildings in New York is able to almost entirely ban large signage from residential areas. So the first rule, we shouldn't be against uh, advertising in its essence or 
a right for shop owner to promote his uh, products or services by shop sign, uh, which, which is located in a place of uh, business. What we need is to throw away thinking that this could exist without any regulations or directions or that open market will regulate this uh, area itself. Because when we let outdoor, outdoor advertising really decide about our public spaces, we often get something opposite, something like this. A situation when every place can be an advertising place. Uh, this is city center of Warsaw. We cordially invite it to you. Very, 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 very uh, spectacular place. Uh, this is the pictures when professional billboards mingle with other advertising signs and create something which is called a visual pollution. It is a spate of announcement, a spate of messages that we can't adopt uh, because there are so many of them, uh, they're excluding themselves, um, they are full of unnecessary information. And to be honest, we really don't want to read them because, um, because of their design, their form, their, um, their, their, their concept, they don't draw our attention. Um, it's sad, but uh, this is how outdoor advertising market in Poland uh, looks like. We have law, obviously, but uh, it isn't as rigid as it should be. We will be talking about this uh, later. I guess Piotrek will be talking about this. So there is, there is a lot to do from changing bills to education. But the problem could be, uh, could be universal. Um, this is how every country could look like if they ignore consequences of lack of good regulations for advertising market and lack of social education as well. It is important for local communities to create boundaries for advertising and to react when these boundaries are exceeded. And we need to teach them how these boundaries could look like. So we would like to show uh, some advertising absurds uh, based on photos from Poland, but as I said, this kind of uh, problems can be all purpose. And of course, it doesn't mean that we don't have any good examples of outdoor advertising in our country, but we thought it will be, um, it will be more instructive, I guess, uh, to talk about curiosities, about negative examples, which show um, how little it takes to the situation goes uh, out of control. So, first of all, advertising uh, makes efforts to be ubiquitous. We go to the park, we expect, uh, we expect some rest, but what we get is a huge bottle of juice attacking us behind, from behind the bush. Uh, Advertising follows people, so it doesn't matter if it's a beach or if it's about destroying the view uh, of the mountains. What matters is the number of glances, which is understood probably if we are judging advertising only in a business way. And one of my favorite examples uh, is a situation from the zoo in Hozhov. It's uh, on the left above where animal sponsor, which was uh, Peugeot, I guess, promoted his new car by putting it in a special cage in the middle of enclosure for lions. And it's funny and scary at one time because it really happened. Um, So ubiquitous uh, goes hand in hand with accumulation of ads. From time to time, Polish press uh, is reporting about count counting all the billboards, banners, boards along some roads. Um, it is done by local officials for statistics or by ordinary people uh, to, uh, for drawing attention to incredible amounts of advertising messages in the places where it should be strictly prohibited. Uh, information like uh, we are forced to watch 300 ads uh, instead of enjoying landscapes when we are driving to Zakopane uh, should be a warning uh, about what we will find when we will reach our destination. But we know worse examples, and this is one of those. A blogger, Michał Gurecki, was counting ads along um, a 13, 13 kilometers uh, stretch of the road between Otwocki and Warsaw. And maybe it's a question for you, maybe you can guess uh, what was the result. 
uh, how many ads uh, was uh, along this, this road. Just guess. <laughs> Thousand, 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 thousand is quite similar because <laughs> it was 2,000 adverts and signs boards in a distance of 13 kilometers. And uh, he was writing uh, something like this. 2,000 messages that I meant to see. I would not be even able to count them properly. So how can I read the... Uh, oh, this is... <laughs> so how can I read all of them? How can I be appealed by them? Just think that I was traveling only as a passenger and I was focusing only on, the, only on them. So they are not effective. Uh, the most jarring example of uh, appropriation of public spaces is something called building wraps. Uh, it is large mesh banner uh, covering up whole facade. This is a common view in Polish cities. Even though we have a law that uh, should prevent residential buildings from being cut off the sunlight. But housing communities doing this for money, of course. Uh, they pretend that there is a repair in the building and they need a special net to protect the bypassers on the street. Also, they are aware that uh, procedures of removing uh, any advertisement is difficult and time consuming. So, in fact, they are actually unpunished. And this is a huge paradox which we need to deal with if we want to, uh, if we're looking for any visual order in public spaces. Uh, but the problem is that uh, private interests uh, create images of whole cities. It's very dangerous. Uh, in the most extreme moment, uh, we don't see it through the lens of architecture, uh, but colorful advertising nets like this. It's an illusion of the city, uh, especially if we are wrapping our problems uh, like abandoned houses or disliked or uh, not well-known uh, Cold War modernism. Uh, we, wrapped it, um, we wrapped them in the nice digestible pictures. The other example of the greedy face of advertising is eating whole buildings by shop signs, like, like in this picture. It is associated, of course, with the lack of knowledge, uh, how good, effective, eye-catching shop sign and storefront should look like. And on this picture, one rule dominates. Be larger, be uh, more colorful, be brighter than, than your neighbor. And the sky is the limit, I guess. But first of all, uh, shop signs should uh, inform, help to identify a place. So this kind of spate of uh, announcement makes them uh, illegible. They are impossible to read. And the real absurd is that uh, these firms and shops don't have to compete with each other like this because they represent different, uh, different uh, businesses, diver different traders. So it is possible to reconcile right to promote and willingness to live in friendly public spaces. Why this is not uh, happening? Uh, stopping this irrational, which is, which is called uh, armaments race, uh, which has rooted in the social mentality, becomes a challenge. And. Uh, when we don't want to be responsible for public space as a common good, we always find a way to circumvent the law, even if there are some good regulations. Um, it's a question of mentality and education. We want to be smarter than local uh, authorities, and if the law is saying that every large advertising net, uh, except that for renovation, as I said uh, earlier, is illegal, we are faking any repairs and covering up whole buildings. Why not? This is happening in Warsaw. And crossing the road is such a prosaic uh, activity in Bydgoszcz, unless you are carrying an advertising banner. Uh, this is the way to uh, bypass the need of legalize an ad. Uh, it's a difference between a billboard stuck into the ground uh, when building permission is required and a banner carrying by a man with, uh, who doesn't need any permits. So uh, advertising creates also a lot of uh, camouflages, I guess. This huge ad, it's not an ad. Uh, 
uh, by Polish law definition. Why not? Because it has wheels. It's a vehicle. And vehicle, um, it, if it's well parked or um, has valid insurance, uh, could stand like this uh, as long as as long as it likes, I guess. Summing uh, lack of good regulation and lack of education could be really dangerous. Uh, what should be important in advertising is regarding of architectural and cultural context. Uh, another absurd, this time from Gdańsk, Dance, Danzig, 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 okay. Uh, cheap pneumatic ad in the old town surroundings. Uh, it is directed uh, to tourists, but uh, the paradox is that it's destroying these tourist values of the of this place. So the benefits from this uh, advertising is uh, short-lived. And once more about the about the context, this picturesque view is uh, cover is part of Kalvaryska Street, uh, central street of Podgorze district in Krakow. Maybe Podgorze isn't downtown, but several museums and galleries make this area visited. And if you want to go to India or another Asiatic country, save your money, come to Kalvariska. This picture shows that uh, this experience will be, uh, I don't know, similar. <laughs> And if you look really carefully, you will find a brilliant example of hyper creativity of Polish advertiser. Because this strange object over here is something uh, which in English is called a uh, cesspool, but I don't know how it's called in uh, German. So I need, I, we need a help <laughs> to understand this joke. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so it's uh, so it's the best way to promote cesspool installing services in the uh, main street of the district. <laughs> it's 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 really really uh, curious. Um, but uh, let's let let be serious just <laughs> for a while. Uh, the result instead of being uh, urban jewelry, as the other companies uh, like to compare. Bad advertising repels. Uh, it is apparent, especially in the touristic place. For example, in Zakopane, uh, recently known as a winter capital of uh, Poland, now is a synonym of visual pollution with ads and signs everywhere and the disappointed visitors, I guess. Uh, Piotr is from, lived in Zakopane, so <laughs> he, 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 he could talk about this example a lot. And the correlation is, uh, is simple. Uh, people don't want to recreate, they want, don't want to rest uh, in the visual mess. They are driving hundreds of kilometers just to find that, uh, everything, uh, that everything from what they are trying to escape is right before their eyes. Not nature, not mountains, not landscapes, but malls, crowd and signs screaming from every corner. And it's like in the photo above uh, with the writing, this could be the view from your window, uh, which can be understood doubly. Uh, it's as a false touristic announcement and as, a, and as an <laughs> ironic invitation to spend holidays in a hotel with large banner on its face aid. And the last absurd, we need to show this. <laughs> a few years ago, to uh, open eyes on how lack of effective regulations for outdoor advertising is destroying our public space, we asked a question. Uh, what would happen if we put, um, if we put iconic buildings or monuments uh, in our Polish context? In the current legal situation and the current culture of taking of, uh, of your surroundings. And here's an answer. Uh, I guess you recognize this building. <laughs> uh, this is how uh, the 
pyramids will look like if they were po in Poland. And a big ban. <laughs> this, is, this, th this was my part. I uh, give the microphone to my colleague. Thank you very much. My name is Piotr Manowiecki. As I, as all are told before, I live in Polish mountains in the Tatra mountain, Tatra mountains. Zakopane is something that you could compare to Garmisch Partenkirchen in, in in Germany and the pictures that you saw before. It's really repeating people and there is a huge decrease of number of tourists in my town. So just to introduce what, what is my situation and why I'm so much involved in the process. I, in the second part of the presentation, I would like to tell you something about how different societies like ours act and what, what, is, what is the aim, what we want to change. So to start with uh, one myth, is the myth of Sa Sao Paulo. Maybe you know, of course, you heard uh, the story that for some time all the adverts were banned and prohibited by the city council. Uh, do you know the story? Or not, not, yeah? Yeah? So th th there's uh, basically there's a new mayor that uh, for some time they he, he just decided that the, the the visual pollution is so so bad that he he banned everything just no compromise everything so the myth that we learned is that there can be some city without anything but this is unfortunately or fortunately wrong because as you probably guess there can there is some need for advertisement. Uh, you cannot ban it, you cannot prohibit it, it's just uh, impossible. And this is what uh, societies, like associations that, like ours, when we start our activities, we believe, we hear about Sao Paulo, and after some time we learn that the truth is a bit different, that just, uh, just uh, you cannot ban everything. So at this moment you are very happy when you see that after seven years of existence uh, there are some small changes that are brought in some, some cities. So on the left you see in Krakow how it was four years ago, the, the left picture on the upper side this is how it used to be, and they decided to clean, and it look, looks like this uh, on the bottom. Uh, so Krakow, uh, our second capital, was the most famous example of, of the city trying to do something with the problem. Another one is Gdańsk, the Danzig. Uh, like, I know the things that you see here, it's nothing special for you probably, but for us, that we are used to the pictures that you saw before. It's a big change to see that local authorities are doing at least something to change the situation. There are many associations. We are probably the oldest one in Poland, but uh, last year's the new, one, new ones were established. So in st uh, for instance, in the city of Katowice, there is uh, association called Napraw Sobie Miasto, which means uh, repair your city. And what they do on the left uh, picture, it's a real picture of, uh, of, of advertisement, uh, adverts in, in, in Katowice. It's, it's really nothing exaggerated. This is really how it looks. So what they do, they collect the adverts and they put it on the, they glue it on the very central square of Katowice. And this is how they attract attention and they uh, create awareness of the problem. Another very nice uh, activity is of association called Improve Poznań, Ulepsz Poznań. They are asking, uh, just kindly asking uh, different companies, don't hang your wall scrapes like this. Of course, when you have very poor legislation in Poland, you can just ask them, basically, this is everything you do. But what they gain, what they gain from this action is that these companies say, okay, I'm doing, I'm behaving in this way, I'm not hanging, so I'm a bit more responsible. Can I say something? Oh. This 
this isn't oh, okay. And uh, this is a list of illegal advertisements in po Poznań. So it's uh, it shows how how it shows the scale of the problem. In our very nice and intelligent, I think, way of creating awareness. This is in our association from the city of Poznań. They made some photoshopped photos. So first you see how the real, the normal, it's an ordinary street looks like in, in Poland, in Poznań. And in computer they did this. They just compared, just again, for you, these are basic things. Um, Berlin looks like this, right? It's not like not like this. So, but when they showed these pictures here, uh, or like this, people, owners of different houses, called them, asking, "Oh, it's really better. Let's do something. Help us to to change the situation." So, on the upper photo, you see the real one and. The lower photo shows how they changed because they were so much appealed by the pictures showing that the city looks nicer without them. So this awareness is very important and, and we are very happy that people change their attitude to this. Very nice things that are organized by associations and also by cities are just competitions for nice signboards as you see here from different cities it's also helping to show that it can be different that uh, the signs can be appealing that they can work properly if they are well designed on the left reality there are some people even friends of us that don't give up and they keep on calling, keep on calling local authorities, asking to do something. And sometimes they are successful, as you see on the right-hand side. Unfortunately, in Poland it works like this, that to be successful or to achieve this, the design that you see on the, on, on the right, unfortunately you have to contact media as well. Without newspaper or, or journalists, you... The, the, the authorities are not so much in, interested in uh, solving the problem. Oh, one, one more thing only. Just uh, maybe, I don't know if you noticed here on this picture that there is a traffic sign. Did you? And it's a very brand new situation. It's, it's such an absurdity that it's, it's incredible. Uh, first, uh, there is in a poor part of Warsaw such a house, which was covered with advertisement with this wall scrape. But at some point, somebody called them Remember, there was a uh, holy mother here. So they cut. <laughs> As you see here. <laughs> but as this situation became famous, it was in media, so as, as, uh, am I right that they just put down this advert or it's still hanging? Uh, it's still hanging. It's still hanging. Uh -huh, yeah, but but at least you see the holy mother, so it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're speaking about some different people that that are dealing with the problem. And what we do, our two directions, two main directions that we do is first to uh, talk with politicians to demand new legislation because this what we have is rubbish. I cannot use other work words for it. And another thing that we are trying to do is to teach and to show people that it can be different, that it doesn't have to be so colorful, so big to attract and to inform about, about the goods and to be effective. Here is an uh, example of another thing or action that, that of one of the actions that we were doing. 
maybe all I will ask you to, to, to give to the audience. Uh, so we are trying to, as I told before, we are trying to talk with politicians and one of the ways is that we prepared so-called uh, postcards. You know, always in postcards you see beautiful landscapes, beautiful cities and beautiful places, but in fact we decided to show how Poland really looks like, like to show the real face of, 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 of Poland. And we created this kind of postcards and we are sending this kind of, of postcards to members of parliament because they are waking, wor working on new legislation. Uh, on the ones that you, that you got, it's a blank, on the blank site on the, the reverse, but on some pictures we also write what, what we want or, or what we think should be done. So this is this part. We are asking them, for instance, to ban adverts next to the roads, or, or just just what what should be what should be done to improve the situation. And it works. It really works. We have feedback from 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 politicians that that they noticed this. And what we do is just we keep keep on remembering that we exist and we want the changes to be done. Education is very important. On the left side you see some pictures from e exhibitions. On the right hand, actually the same what we are doing now, so the speeches. We see that it, it's also helping, it's working very well if, if we can discuss, especially with local uh, societies. And what we do also, we create some, I, I would say, actions. On the left hand side, it was an action in January last year. Don't be to take it down. Yeah, don't be ashamed to take down the, the adverts. So we are asking people just to remove adverts from the place where they know that they are forbidden, like bus stops, tram stops. They are glued by with their stickers, so you can just remove them and just. Of course, you can you can say that, that it's not very effective, but at least when you when you show and when you ask people to do it, some people start doing it, and it also changes the situation. And on the right hand side, it was a competition called Miasto Speciel, during which we were looking for the most ugly advertisement in Poland, which was not so easy to find, as, as the competition was really uh, big. So the winner was uh, the city of Allenstein. Allenstein and what we call our Polish Piccadilly Circus. <laughs> <laughs> and we are very happy because, uh, as I said before, some cities are changing something. The parliament is finally working on new legislation, but we are really also happy that there are some other people that uh, notice our efforts and we got some, we, we got a, a special prize uh, from the city of Warsaw. It was a bit uh, schiz uh, schizophrenic situation because in winter we got this, this prize and two months later we learned that the city decided to put just to cover one main bridge in Warsaw with advertisements. Uh, just the same city that gave us this advertisement. So as Academy also gave us the prize, I hope that you will also not cover your building. <laughs> I just this way would like to really thank you very much for 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 your award. It's it's really important for us. It's it's beautiful to 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 know that even in Germany some people notice that they are that we are doing our our job. So thank you very much for it and thank you for your attention. So thank you very much. Is this on? Yeah. Thank you very much, Alexandra and Piotr, for this um, yeah impressive. 
in any respect impressive and uh, stimulating presentation uh, und ich darf Sie zunächst einmal mit uh, Erlaubnis unserer Gäste kurz auf Deutsch uh, begrüßen und ich tue das auch durchaus programmatisch, uh, weil ich Sie einfach ermutigen wollte, möglichst bald in die Diskussion einzusteigen und zwar gerne auch um, auf Deutsch. Also wir kriegen schon jede Frage um, gedolmetscht. Englisch können wir irgendwie alle, aber es ist sicher ein offenes Geheimnis, dass die meisten von uns besser, präziser und auch freier auf Deutsch formulieren können, mich selbst leider eingeschlossen, vielleicht an allererster Stelle. Aber jetzt fange ich mal an mit einigen Fragen, die ich vorbereitet habe, which I will ask you, there will be some questions I have prepared and then we will, uh, we will be trying to open the discussion to the, um, to the audience. Um, my First question would be, okay, that was extremely shocking, yeah? But um, <laughs> it was to, to everyone who hasn't been yet to Poland, I'm, 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 I'm sure about this. Uh, but my first question would be, um, in how far is um, Poland a particular case of uh, abuse or misuse of public space by the advertisement industry in this part of Europe. I think that this is a um, common phenomenon, uh, the, the brutalism of um, adverts, that this is a common phenomenon um, of um, post-socialist neoliberal uh, development, because on, on one hand there is a certain um, inclination or a certain readiness to, uh, to accept this, to To, to appreciate this as a contrast to the former grey-black colors of um, communist uh, communism, I think you mentioned it, and on the other hand there are uh, quite weak authorities on the state level, on the regional and even municipal level, so, uh, so there is a certain reluctance to, uh, to set to set uh, guiding lines or rules for um, advertisements and other activities in, um, uh, in public space. But still, uh, my impression is, uh, uh, I travel quite frequently to Poland, and my impression is that uh, uh, Poland is the most uh, polluted, as you, as, you, as, you, as you formulated it, uh, the most polluted country uh, by advertisements in this part of Europe. First, first question, is that right? Is that, would, you, would, you, would you agree with my impression and Uh, second question, if this is right, what, what are the reasons, perhaps the historical reasons for this? So I, I think that uh, what we see in Poland is rather a rule, unfortunately, than an exception. Mm -hmm. uh, we are saying that out of the neighbors that Poland has, only two neighbors are giving really good example. One is Germany, and the second one, what do you think would be? Belarus. Belarus. <laughs> exactly. Uh, we don't uh, consider Sweden or Denmark as our neighbor, we just, uh, it's, it's, maybe it's, diff it's different way, way of, of thinking what is neighbor on and what is not. We, 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 we are taught in our geography lessons that the neighbor is what is it really next to in, in the inland. Uh, so Germany, some of you would agree or would not agree that the problem is more or less uh, solved. In Belarus, it's also a very strange thing because uh, the country is considered something like uh, Skansen of communism. It's not exactly true. The country is more or less normal. I, I know it's maybe also shocking, but it's, it, it's not a communist country anymore. It's something between communism and capitalism countries some, somewhere in the mid, midway. But for some reason, they pay a lot of attention to quality of public spaces. They paint houses, they, they clean gardens, they, it really looks very nice. It looks much nicer than, than, than you would expect going there. Czech Republic, Slova Slovakia, the situation is somehow between Poland and Germany. There are places where it's regulated quite nicely, but unfortunately next to big roads or some 
where, where there are no special local uh, regulations, it also goes in, the, in this direction. So I would say that, of course, Russia, I don't mention Russia, it's exactly the same what we have in Poland and Ukraine. It's even the pictures that you see on, in, on television from Maidan, do you remember the picture of the burnt house next to the parliament in, in Kiev? There is a there is there's a burnt house that where, where those those protests were and it was also covered with big advertisement so when we look at this it, it looks exactly the same exactly the same maybe something uh, more about these reasons because obviously this uh, opposition between gray communism and um, colorful capitalism um, it's one of the reasons um, w that we need to um, we need to deal with um, visual pollution now. Um, lack of good uh, law regulation, lack of education. I think it's more complex, but this is um, what you say. It's a rhetorical saying that it's uh, quite popular in talking about this problem. You, you mentioned the lack of good law, of good regulations, but what about a um, um, specifically Polish uh, sense of personal liberty? I have, uh, I have heard uh, or, or read quite frequent, frequently this argument in the context of uh, um, issues of urban planning, because urban planning is also quite, uh, let's say, wi wild and unregulated, extremely unregulated in Poland. And there is this argument, okay, uh, th there is this uh, fet fetish, fetish of personal freedom in Poland, which is a um, um, which which is which is based on the on the long period of foreign rule. I'm talking about the 19th century when Polish was uh, didn't exist as a as a as an independent state after the Polish partitions, um, and there was a foreign rule which which created this um, sense of personal freedom at, at and at the same time the lack of responsibility for common space and common common goods. What do you think about this uh, argument? Is it a kind of excuse? I personally don't don't agree. Maybe Ola is, has different point of view. But uh, if this was true, so what about Czechs? What about Slovakia? They have the same problem. What about states? This is the pro this is the problem of money and of power of money rather than. Uh, states are also a country with a very strong sense of personal freedom. Yeah. So that was would be. Uh, it's, it's yeah. of course, but there are many countries that have the same problem, and uh, I, I would not say that that for Czechs the the personal freedom is as as important as for us. Uh, I, I see that uh, for maybe it was some phase, or some period in the development of our democracy and capitalism. But as I see, people really want changes. It's not like this that we want it to be like this. There are new, new surveys that were done half a year ago, and about 70% people of, of, our, of, of, of Polish, they want changes. They, 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 they say that we need regulations. We, we cannot go, go on like this. I will add some, something to that, because um, I think there is a special um, special way of dealing with officials, this special culture culture dealing with officials. When uh, an expert uh, comes to you and say, okay, I'm an expert, I know how to uh, improve your shop sign, I know how to do a good public space, the typical Paul said, no way, I'm no better, I'm a better expert, I do exact something, something uh, exactly opposite. So this is a problem which we need to deal with if, if we want to, to make some change. It's, it's I guess, quite, uh, quite dangerous. Yeah, there's, okay. th there's also a problem of, uh, of the quality of, of our state. Uh, unfortunately, officials are not uh, helpful. It's not like this that they will call you and ask, maybe you could do something. It's it's not that they will call you and help find the solution. It's rather or punish, remove it, and if they have don't no tools to 
to, to make you remove it, they just ignore it. So unfortunately, it also our fight is also fight for better procedures for for the government working or local of, of, for officials working in more helpful and um, friendly way. So you have mentioned uh, you mentioned that you have talked to many politicians and many officials then that you have sent them these uh, beautiful uh, postcards so I'm sure that you have been able to uh, to, ra to raise the awareness of the problem uh, Uh, at, uh, in, in, in the, in the so not, on, not only in um, circles of politician, politicians, but also in the society. But um, have you seen so far any um, concrete, visible effects of your of your activities, of yours, or of the activities of the other other initiatives uh, you mentioned at uh, the end of your talk? So, do you have any? Um so the the biggest success was in Krakow. Krakow, uh, the old town looked terrible some yeah. 10 years ago and the very historic core of the city looks looks normal, not perfect, but normal, more or less normal. You, you showed this example, yeah? Yeah, yeah. there was yeah. one example and yeah. it's, uh, it's, I know it's very small thing, just maybe it's stupid to, to yeah. speak about only one city, but when there is one example... And when people... It's, it's an exceptional city, so it's... Exceptional, uh, it's, but... It's a, uh, it's a big, su big example, success. Popular but, example, but, 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 but we can use the argument that, look, there are many tourists coming, there are surveys done among them, and they are saying that they love the, the, the city. And, and we, 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 when we talk to local societies, we, 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 we tell them... But who, who initiated this change and how, how did it work? Was it your, your impact, the impact, impact of your, uh, your initiative, or how, how, did it, how did it work? It's, uh, you know, with, with such things, you cannot say that there's only one author of, of success. Uh, We, with the album Polski Outdoor, uh, do you have it, or maybe you, you, you can you, you can show? Just if you show, open some picture, so so that you, you they see what is inside. So so there there are actually similar pictures that that you saw before. So in in 2007, when our where when our association was established, nobody wanted to talk to us. They were saying there is no problem in our city. Mm -hmm. But when we bring this kind of album to the city of, of Krakow, to politicians, and when we show them, this, look, this is your city, they say, oh, you are right. So first there was awareness. Then local journalists. Uh, the newspaper was writing all the time, all the time, kept on writing about the problem. And... Uh, It's also it's it's very important that there is some local uh, that there are local activities that are demanding uh, changes, but it's very important to ha to get support from politicians. And Krakow was the same was the first city where uh, we got, we got it. So uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, on one hand you have these visible changes, but on the other hand you have uh, changes of mentality, which I think is a great success of so our think, yeah. our association. No, no doubt the, about the, it. Yeah. <laughs> the place where we are uh, in Poland now um, is uh, begin with the very hard work of our foundators mm -hmm. uh, Elżbieta Dymna and Marcin Rutkiewicz, mm -hmm. uh, who are. Um, the authors of this uh, nice publication, so... Okay. But I will add one, one more thing about Zakopane, this, our Polish gar Garnish Parten Kirschen, uh, that uh, you saw the pictures, it, it looks really terrible now. Uh, but local hoteliers and owners of the companies, they say, oh, no, we are losing money like this. And they, they pushed the city, the town council to prepare local uh, law to clean just one one street it's impossible to clean all the all the town it's just impossible in Polish law but you if you use some special tools you can clean one one uh, one street and there were some people that didn't want it but there is uh, i would say consensus of people that run businesses that 
that we lose money if 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 mm -hmm. if the tourist destination looks like this. Nobody wants to 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 visit us. So there are even e good economical reasons for reducing um, the proliferation of um, advertisements. Um, there were some people against you in uh, Zakopane. Do you, do you have any further opponents um, on the political stage? Are there people arguing strongly against um, against your activities? Um, maybe. Or do you get only appreciation, like uh, awards from <laughs> Warsaw and Berlin? <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, we, we don't have any any um, any opponents very dangerous. <laughs> I don't know how to say it in English, but um, uh, this uh, we have uh, in the commission. Which um, maybe you are, 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 um, answer this question because <laughs> I'm a bit confused how to say it. Uh, so. Basically, what, what I would say that there are some political parties that are saying that when government is trying to limit the adverts, as we are opposition, we must do opposite. So they are against, just in from for political reasons. No, no, that, that they don't, that they, they are not, <laughs> that they are not 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 aware of the problem. But the problem with government and of the ruling coalition is that they say that they want to do something without it but they are afraid of the power of money and i'm quite skeptical if they are really if they are really up to do something radical i was uh, in the uh, in the uh, on i have a lecture in the city council in lublin and we were talking about some good examples and how to improve a pub public spaces, how to, how to clean them or do activities like this. And then one of the people there, uh, one of the city councillors said that, no, 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 we, we don't do this. This uh, won't... Uh, uh, sorry. Yes, uh, people don't like this. So this, this shows uh, what kind of attitude they have. The, the only real, uh, just one uh, last thing I say, uh, I think the only real opponent is the chamber of the companies that, uh, that, that put those adverts. They are really influential, they have a lot of money and this is, th I think this is the main reason they support, is the only reason why, why, why government is afraid to do something radical. Thank you very much so far. Uh, wenn wir das richtig gesehen haben, gibt es schon jetzt Wortmeldungen. Ja, der immer zuverlässige Wolfgang Kiel. Ich wollte nur noch auf eine Sache hinweisen, uh, that there is a um, free available PDF file um, in the internet uh, of your book. Also das ganze Buch, das jetzt, das jetzt hier, wird das Buch herumgereicht oder das Buch Polski Outdoor, das wir gerade gezeigt haben, können Sie im Internet in voller Länge als PDF-Datei herunterladen. Also wenn Sie Polski Outdoor googeln, dann stoßen Sie ziemlich schnell ähm, zu dieser PDF, kostenlosen PDF-Datei. Wolfgang Kiel. Ich habe zwei Fragen. Einmal, mir ist aufgefallen, wenn man immer wieder nach Warschau kommt zum Beispiel, dass sich die Werbung, die großen Werbung, zum Beispiel Jerusalemska, Maschakowska an der Kreuzung, jedes Jahr anders sind, aber immer dieselbe Firma. Ich gehe davon aus, dass also die Firmen diese Kreuzung als Ganzes gepachtet haben. Haben Sie jemals herausbekommen, wie viel Geld da fließt? Uh, this is the what you were asking about is the the very center of the country uh, so it's it's also the the most expensive, the most expensive. Uh, this unfortunately Poland's times square i would Poland, say uh, yeah. times square was in allenstein so so okay. <laughs> so this is polish polish uh, marszałkowska uh, the problem is that the in information is not uh, publicly available. You cannot ask. It's it's a secret. So so what we have is just only we ha we hear that it must it might be, and it might be three hundred thousand uh, Polish zloty per month, per month which, which is, is about seventy five thousand euros per month. 
Yeah. But but this is not not so much confirmed. This is what we just mm -hmm. hear. We, rumors. We, we do, rumors. We don't see. Uh, to the owner of the building, yes, because it's mm -hmm. another problem that they don't pay any tax from it. That, mm -hmm. Yeah, so they, they just take everything, they just pay some income tax. They don't tax. pay taxes for, Th for advertising? They pay, yeah. they pay just normal income tax, I see. but okay. they don't pay any special yeah. advertising uh, tax. Yeah. yeah, and I think this presents us just the core of the problem that there are so many people financially interested in, um, in continuing um, this um, practice. Gibt es im Augenblick weitere Fragen? Ja, Entschuldigung, Wolfgang Kiel noch mit äh, einer zweiten. Und zwar wurde uns vorhin mitgedacht, Sie haben die Initiative zur die Befreiung des Hauptbahnhofs in die, äh, in die Wege geleitet. Ich würde gerne wissen, äh, ich habe gehört, diese, der Protest gegen die Verhängung des Hauptbahnhofs hat sich nicht gegen die PKP, also gegen die Bahn gerichtet, sondern gegen den Werber, nämlich H&M in Stockholm. Stimmt das? H&M in Stockholm, ja. So the, 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 the second the second part of your question, uh, when we we always think that it's more efficient to attack the company, because for the company it's important that they have some public public relations that they want to have good image. For Polish railways, it's just it's they, they don't care anything what they what we think about them. <laughs> it's. Okay. Really, it, it, I, I'm not joking. It, it's true. But for H&M and for some big companies, yeah, also it, familiar uh, with this in Germany as to our railway, <laughs> which is quite different. But <laughs> the, the image is very important. It's 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 the money issue for for them and the, the value of of the brand. If you attack all the time the brand, the value of the brand is going down. So probably this is the similar strategy that was used in states or in in other countries. And uh, it, this initiative actually was born or was created by Ola and another friend. It was uh, when Ola was still not the member of 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 the association. When we saw that she's so so much willing to do something, we we took her to to our association and really this and is so for me. It was a moment when I uh, when I thought, oh my god, I can't stand it any longer. How this uh, nice uh, it's it's maybe not for everybody, but for me it was nice uh, renovated uh, railway station. Why there are some advertisements in in this? Why the architecture context is destroying? Uh, so we organized some um, some protests, some um, some debates, but we were talking, and I guess nothing no, nothing really changes except of uh, changing uh, the mentality or showing that we are against that this, that that kind of advertisements, and it's important as well because uh, we, as I said, create these boundaries and react when they are exceeded. So uh, this is important in this kind of activity. I will add only one very sad thing about this uh, central station. So the only reason why we have renovated uh, nice, clean uh, railway stations in Poland is that in 2012 there was a football competition. Uh, it's unfortunate, I'm, I'm, I'm very sad to say it, but this was the only motivation for the government to clean it, otherwise they would be all the time dirty. But as uh, the way of thinking of, of our government is really very pr primitive, I, I cannot say it a different way, way. So they put a lot of money to renovate, but they didn't think about the system of financing the, the maintenance of, 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 the, of the railway station. So some of them have shops that pay. So from the money that you, that you get from shops, you, you, you clean. But in Warszawa Centralna, it's it's not enough 
money to cover the expenses of cleaning. And when they were renovating, they, were, they, they just came with the brilliant idea, the government, that two months a year they will put uh, wallscapes on, on it. And this this is how they will collect the, money. Uh, uh, continuing this digression, they find a, a solution because uh, they are thinking about completely destroying this uh, this uh, railway station and build something new, which wo which will be um, a, a mall with a railway station function, something like Hauptbahnhof, I guess. <laughs> Uh, we have, yeah, yeah. take, take the uh, Berlin Warsaw Express and go to Warsaw to see the beautifully renovated uh, central station in Warsaw, which is one of the major uh, late modernist buildings. But oh, hört man nicht, okay. Uh, we, we have, we have at, at, least, at least four further questions. So... Uh, Jedno pytanie, ale jeszcze nie, ale jeszcze nie, jeszcze nie, proszę pani. Na trzeciej pozycji pani jest. Bitte schön. I, I happen to have the I happen to have the microphone. One of the things which puzzles me is uh, on your example of um, um, Zakopane. Um, you said that people were repelled by the advertising. They're not coming to Zakopane in the way that people come to Times Square where advertising is the context. If people are being repelled by advertising, then the advertising isn't working. And looking at many of the examples you showed to me, or showed to us, I'm sorry, I can't possibly imagine how that advertising appeals to people. I'd be repelled by it. Are other people being repelled by it? And my question is, is there any research into this? Because if advertising is counterproductive, it costs a lot of money to, to, to create. It costs fees to, to put up and to present. Uh, if it's not working, it's being counterproductive, then the companies who are commissioning this, are they're losing. Um, so who's kidding who? Is there any research into this? And if there was, and if my assumption is correct, that's very much to your advantage. Maybe I will find the, some, some picture to, to answer your, your question. So here, basically, can you hear me? Or yeah. Uh, so here, the, the the adverts that you see were produced by small companies. So they just they just go there and they say, "Oh, we will pay you something for for the advert. You will put it." And uh, I don't think they have any budget to to measure it anyway. So. Just, just this is the normal way of informing about about your own private uh, company, small company. This is the small. This is what small business does. Uh, uh, in in the uh, this space available film. Uh, this is a film about outdoor advertising, mainly in United States, but uh, in Asia or Europe uh, as well. There are some. Um, some sentence, um, a person from outdoor agency said that uh, about 50% uh, of advertising is effective and 50% 50, 50 is ineffective. But uh, everybody is uh, scared to check which one. So this, the, uh, so, <laughs> so I guess these this re researchers are not, uh, not as uh, accurate as we wanted them to be. We'll show you another example here, like the Samsung, for instance. So you, you see that it is a big company, the, 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 this, this Samsung, of course, everybody knows Samsung. And also the company that produces this, this particular wallscape is also a, an important one. The problem is that they are... Uh, doing some researches, but using their own methodology. So we just cannot influence anything with, with this. It's just impossible to, to say you are wrong with, 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 your, uh, with your researches. They, they come with it to the customers and they say, oh, look, one, two million people will, will look at you and, and this is what we offer you. Yeah, but but you are you are you, uh, we, we we get we we, we get your, your point and and. Advertising makes 
Thank you. Re really, it, it's very, very beautiful uh, advice for us. It's, it, it's really good, good expression. Uh, just, just it's uh, th this topic has become fashionable last last years. So as we know, there are some first attempts to on universities, but they are just first attempts. It's not. I will, an I will an talk with solution. some students from Krakow, and from Katowice. Uh, she, she, she uh, they are writing this kind of uh, this kind of texts and doing some researches about it. There was a question about one uh, picture. I will try to find no, it. I'm not, I'm not sure where it is. Ah, uh, it's in a book. It's in a book. We don't have it here on presentation. I'm sorry. No, my question is a question. Please tell me who decided to have so many years of such a stupid advertising. Who did it? Because it can't be a man of culture. Also die, die Frage betrifft den Palast der Kultur, der Kultur. und der Wissenschaft in ja. Warschau. Oh, ja, ja. Das ist das erste Hochhaus in Warschau aus den 50er, Jahre, 50er Jahren, ein stalinistisches Gebäude, also aus der Zeit unserer ähm, Berliner Stalinallee und dieses Gebäude, also was wirklich eine, ein Symbol eine, eine Ikone, ein Symbol von Warschau gewesen ist und nach wie vor auch äh, geblieben ist, war jahrelang äh, verhängt mit einer jahrelang verhängt mit einer großformatigen ähm, Werbung und die Frage ist, äh, wer, wer hat das zugelassen, wer hat das verordnet, wer hat das möglich gemacht? Aber Werbung für Kultur, an, äh, für kulturelle Veranstaltungen. Okay, aber geben wir mal weiter. Wasza odpowiedź. Kto do tego dopuścił? And the answer is simple, I guess. Uh, the owner of the building, with the protection of municipalities. Who is, who is the owner? It's the municipality. Uh, yes, it's a mm. uh, it's a city building. Mm. So the um, the municipalities, mm -hmm. it's uh, mm -hmm. uh, led to to to. Um, mm. Yes, okay. a city of yeah. Warsaw yeah. led this yeah. advertisement yeah. 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 to be. Yeah. But one, one, should, one should add that this building is quite controversial. Yeah? It used to be the most hated building in Poland because it was a, a declared a gift of Stalin given to Poland in the But 1950s. So uh, it was a symbol of uh, Russian, Russian domination in uh, communist times. But let's, uh, we, we, we have a plenty of further uh, questions. But the yeah. optimistic thing is that this kind of advertisement uh, is banned now. So yeah. there will be no other advertisements on the Palace of Culture and Science. Okay. Good. We are with the... Bitte schön. Yeah. Uh, I'll try it in English. We have a similar situation at the Kaiser Wilhelm Memorial Church in Berlin. There are a lot of boxes and uh, pavilions to sell fast food and souvenirs. And most people say it's, it's awful to, to have these, these things. But... The thousand euros a year and we can uh, make a we can we, are, we can have another priest and we can pay him and we don't want to cut this but the government says it's the first of may it's out it's out of order and i, I ask you um, it's a common it's, it's a common sense in poland to have a win-win situation They pay for it, and they get something, and the, the, the people say, it's all right. We have money, and they have the advertisement. Is it, is it common sense? <laughs> Not understand? <laughs> yes, I, I, think, I think we did understand. Wszyscy są jednomyślni w Polsce, że to jest win-win situation. But what, yeah. what do you mean by win-win situation yeah. here? Because for uh, me, it's uh, win-lose, rather. There are some yeah. people... <laughs> <laughs> some, we, it's, it's, it's a, uh, some people are members, and 
All people who are part of this are winner. There's no loser. And if you, are, if, you are, if you have only winner, people say it's all right. I think that the loser is... Uh, money, money, money. Money, yes. You know, the, the winner is this, uh, this owner of this uh, mm. sewage system. Mm. <coughs> But the loser are all the people that are walking the street. Mm. So yeah. it's, it's not the win-win. It's win-win-lose. Yeah. Or win, lose, lose. Uh, yeah, <laughs> there is just one winner for me. I'm sorry. But maybe the people of the town are richer than before, and they are. But we are talking about this uh, repelling uh, yeah. features of advertising. Mm. So richer is uh, it, it's Zakopane. It's my Zakopane. It's my town here on the left. It's, it's your town, and you are richer too. <laughs> <laughs> So Richard is the owner of this house, mm -hmm. which is not somebody from Zakopane. It's, it's not a person from Zakopane. Mm -hmm. Richard is uh, the owner of this advertisement, mm -hmm. which is not Zakopane mm -hmm. company. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if Richard is Hyundai. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure if it works, but, but definitely owners of the houses, like... Mm -hmm. uh, Here, they are richer, the, the mm. owners of the houses where you can mm. ha hang. Mm. But people from the next street that mm. they cannot yeah. uh, mm. uh, put uh, adverts, but mm. they have hotels and they are empty, they are losing. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So there It's is a lot of winners, I would say. But uh, uh, in, in, um, in, 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 in how far do also public institutions or even state authorities benefit from advertisements when they are owners of buildings, like, like in the case of the, um, um, uh, of the Palace of Culture? Is that a big, big issue? Uh, now it's the topic is fashionable. That's why they, they, do, they, they prohibit, they do something about it. They, they remove from schools, they remove from this palace of culture. Before, they, yeah. they did not. It's like schools, uh, for example. That's yeah. a good example, I yeah, think. Do, do, do lots of schools benefit from uh, advertisements? You must remember uh. that those schools that are next to big roads, they benefit. But this is just mm -hmm. 10% okay. or 15%. Okay. Good. Weitere, weitere Fragen. Sie hatten sich gemeldet, ja? Ja? Ja, ja, ich sehe, ich sehe, also ich, Sie, also ich habe jetzt Sie, Sie und Sie, ja, Sie können anfangen und dann sehe ich mindestens zwei weit. Gibt es noch mehr? Sie sehe ich auch, ja? Okay. Uh, I would, uh, I would like to invite you. Uh, first of all, congratulations on the success of your campaign because I think it's very impressive that you have been able to change in parts mentality of people. Um, You referred to uh, the building, the Academy building in Pariser Platz. Unfortunately, it has been uh, hung by uh, an advertisement for an exhibition uh, two years ago for the exhibition on uh, stadia that were built for the football championships, by, initiated by our member colleague, uh, Volkwin Mark, uh, of Gerkan Mark Partner, very important uh, German architectural practice, who also happened to be a member of the design review board of the Munich airport. And there, at the Munich airport, we have been fighting uh, for many, many years against the advertising campaign that they have uh, ins installed inside the airport. I don't know whether you've been to Munich, but uh, I can tell you it's a quasi ex-territorial public institution that is making a lot of money from advertising. And when we brought up the subject that uh, the colleague there uh, mentioned, how do you test how effective the advertising is? They said, oh, well, they don't really want to know. So talking about Spindel, der Wirklichkeit, it's a kind of a, a interesting spiral of uh, uh, illusion. And uh, the advertising is illusory. The, the sense that you actually reach an audience is illusory because you don't actually reach more people. You don't sell more cars. However, I see it very negatively, uh, and that's why I'm inviting you to Munich Airport, for instance. I mean, there are other places you could also be active. Uh, because for the new terminal that they have uh, installed, or the, or the new, uh, it's called a the satellite, they have 
clad the uh, the cause, the in, inner cause where the bathrooms are, with uh, large screen televisions on the corners. On the travelators, every five meters there are flat screens. Uh, there are they are thinking about uh, projecting things on the ground. You're right. So everything, and where the escalators are, they want a large banner, etc. They are completely crazy, but because they see an increase in uh, income through advertising, they are not stopping it. And uh, because even though it's a public uh, institution, they are making millions out of uh, advertising. So uh, I think your Photoshop campaign would be very welcomed uh, uh, in Munich and, and places like that. Very much. So you, s you see that this, uh, your issue is also topical in Germany, although it's not so visible at first glance. Yeah? At first glance, it might seem to you to be a sort of paradise in, in terms of, uh, of, uh, of adverts. We have uh, weitere zwei Fragen. Jetzt die one, one sentence. Thank, thank you. It's, it's really interesting for us to. to, to it's yeah. really inspiring. We are not aware of it. Only thing that I was uh, that I mentioned when I was traveling by car from Rostock to Denmark. When I went to Denmark, then I I, I found a real difference between Germany. So, really. Okay. Eine weitere Frage. Yeah. Zwei Wahl. Nein, 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 nein. Ja, ja, Sie, Sie melden sich, stellen Sie sich an in der Schlange, ja? Also Sie sind dann die Dritte, ja, bitte schon. Die Dame hat sich schon seit sehr langer ja. Zeit gemeldet. Um, yeah, staying, staying with this moment of Schwindel or Vertigo. One, um, one question, what does it mean, this Schwindel, Schwindel then? Vertigo? It's the, it's the two meanings, actually. There's this little game in between. And if we, if we look at what um, happens to these cities and happens to you when you walk through your cities, you feel this dizziness or you feel this feeling of that you, you dislike what you see and you get uh, crumbling inside. But um, did you ever come across a cityscape, maybe one of the peripheries, where you wished that advertising would have appeared, as in the situations that you showed us, that you could then raise awareness and um, about the qualities that these inner cities, um, in most of the cases of other European countries, lost. Um, there are some architects or artists that paint buildings that are forgotten, stand in the middle of the city, nobody sees them, they paint them blue, and suddenly people feel, oh my goodness, this is our city, and they start taking care of it. So what I see in this um, advertising pollution, I see a virus that goes through a body, and afterwards the body is stronger and, um, and gains power. So have you ever been triggered to initiate the virus in some corner that you then because what you do with the citizens is that they look again at the city and they give value to the city and they fight for the city and they recover kind of the city. Did this ever happen to you? Did you ever see something like this? Uh, Remember that advertisement is not, not our only problem. Uh, we have terrible planning, ur urban planning uh, problems. We have problems with architecture, very poor quality architecture. We have lots of other problems. So uh, yes, we are willing to change. There are many people that want to the cities and the landscape look look nicer but unfortunately this is work for 200 years there are so many problems we are we are not showing the the poor architecture but but it, it's really everywhere everywhere really everywhere
Gut, wir haben, äh, wir, wir haben jetzt min mindestens drei weitere Fragen und wir müssen auch la langsam, ga also ganz langsam äh, an das, an das äh, Sie, sind die, Sie werden die Zweite, ja? äh, wir müssen ganz langsam auch an das Ende, also ge gegen sieben ähm, sollten wir mit der Veranstaltung fertig sein. Also wir haben jetzt noch höchstens eine knappe Stunde für Fra äh, knappe halbe Stunde für Fragen und Diskussionen ähm, und deswegen die Bitte, ähm, Short questions, short answers, okay? Bitte schön. Okay, I'll keep it short. Uh, what about the issue of professionalism? People who produce this type of advertising are the people who have studied in any art institute or design schools or whatever. Of course, you have the ma major large things produced by international companies who are probably even not even produced inside Poland, just imported from somewhere. But for all those smaller ads that are polluting the roadsides and the smaller buildings, uh, do you have any views on how to, well, engage in a discussion with people in art schools, people who become designers, people who are launching their own small companies as designers, people who are basically selling these poor designs to small companies? Um, the uh, printing agencies uh, who gave a project by free uh, is uh, responsible for how this public space is, um, how it is. And there are a lot of uh, projects now in Warsaw or, or in Krakow that involves uh, students of uh, art schools to, um, to, <laughs> to, to, to make better sign, uh, sign shops, uh, shop signs, I'm sorry, <laughs> shop signs, for example. And they, um, they Patrick, maybe you will tell, uh, Uh, they are connecting the designers and companies, the, the businessmen, and they put through this contact. It's there are a lot of projects like this now. Yeah, yeah, but uh, everything. Yeah, <laughs> uh, so your question is very, very important. As you, as you see here, somebody who designed this one. Of course, this is uh, Photoshop, but th these are real pictures from from Poland. It is everything you see here. So you see that you see there is no education after after it. It's it's. Uh, I would say that more than ninety percent of, of of the adverts that we see in Poland it's made by non-professionals. Yeah. Is that yeah? Okay. Next uh, next question, please. Uh, what you said about uh, the uh, advertisement in um, Munich, I think, uh, and uh, there's so much much advertisement and uh, nobody can really um, uh, see it maybe one, one should try to uh, so it is uh, in reality a sort of sponsoring yeah? the firms who make this advertisement sponsor the um, um, the, uh, the, the building or the uh, shops or whatever Maybe one should try to convince the um, the um, also ich sag's mal in Deutsch ja ähm, man müsste einfach die 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 Aufträge geben für die Reklame davon überzeugen dass sie diese Form des Sponsoring vielleicht auch ohne die Reklame machen könnten denn wenn keiner hinguckt ähm, ist es ja über äh, flüssig und man könnte dann vielleicht sie locken mit kleinen Emblemen so, ja, äh, dank der und der Firma äh, können Sie das Gebäude in Gänze betrachten und in Ruhe und also. Das ist eine schöne Idee, ja. We try to uh, recommend to the airport that they should they should select special places for advertising. We, we recommended to the airport that they should select special places for advertising. And in order to make, make sure that they have enough income, they should argue these are exclusive locations and you will have to pay this amount of money. So because it's a monopoly, 
because they can tell where advertising can take place, they can also fix the prices. But the mentality of the people at the airport is very much, um, I don't want to use a vulgar term, in the end, it's it's a kind of you know taking your wares to the market. It's uh, like selling yourself, essentially. I know the word you mean. Yes, and uh, I don't want to use that word, <laughs> but you know um, there is. You talk about professionalism. There is unfortunately a mentality of marketing that overrides any sense of aesthetics, any sense of ethics, any sense of um, no. even even you know effectiveness of this uh, of advertising i don't have anything against advertising i just have something against the kind of uh, universal coverage of it the worst example is uh, vienna airport uh, if you arrive in vienna airport you pass through the doors and you are come into this semicircular space where people wait for the uh, you know the guests you see thousands of different advertising uh, pieces and you don't you don't see anything in anymore so you could say uh, that's a kind of an ideal situation because you have a kind of mo mosaic of uh, pointillist mosaic of colors and you know texts nobody reads it at all it doesn't make any sense any longer so in a way that that's how advertising kills itself right so but you know rather than to say that that's a good situation uh, I think we need to legislate and we need to control it. Um, I, I was going to ask about uh, what do you think of learning from Las Vegas? Mm, that would be my next question. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Should that be our our next and perhaps our last question? What What about learning from Las Vegas? You know, Las Vegas um, was this famous book which uh, appeared in 1970. Two, as far as I know, and it called um, architects to um, to understand and to 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 appreciate vulgar forms of architecture, like uh, banal, shiny buildings uh, in in Las Vegas. So one message was: uh, don't be so arrogant towards at the end of the day towards popular tastes. And the other message was. Um, uh, have a have a close look and and recognize that this is not just chaos or disorder that uh, but rather that behind this uh, apparent chaos there are some rules and some principles of order so uh, the question is could we could we apply the same to what you what you what you have shown us today is there might there be an order behind yeah, first question is are we too arrogant um, towards popular tastes, and the other question is: uh, um, Might there be an, an order behind this apparent chaos? Um, I think uh, the um, projecting cities by ruler is not good. Um, a little bit of chaos in this uh, is is better, I guess. But uh, I, the quality of outdoor advertising is in Poland. Uh, it's not similar, I guess, to Las Vegas. So this kind of association. In 1972, is Las Vegas was was widely seen as absolute trash. You know, so um, I, I think that this, the the perception of Las Vegas 40 years ago was quite similar to today's perception of uh, what what you are showing us. Okay. So, wow. So I, I think yeah, <laughs> I, I think that this this um, uh, this question is quite 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 interesting. Yeah, but my uh, uh, similar to English language is <laughs> is too poor, I guess, <laughs> to, uh, to to answer this question properly. Um, uh, what I want to say, ah, um, if we create uh, this kind of place like um, Times Square or maybe something similar to Las Vegas in Polish cities. Um, it will be good if uh, the other zones in the city will be clean. And uh, as I said, uh, this chaos uh, in Las Vegas or in, on Times Square is uh, ostensible. So the regulation here is, uh, is, um, is still important, okay. are, are still would important. You, would you like to, like to add to...? Uh, there is, uh, like, I'm, I'm not a... F 
maybe talking about this this Las Vegas uh, problem is maybe too much for me, but uh, with money, we fit. We speak about aesthetics, but unfortunately, we are still in Poland not on the level of speaking of consum consumptionism or of some more philosophical questions that are connected with, with advertisements. For instance, if uh, advertising new cars that are bringing more pollution for car for, for you know for, for environment that are you know that, that that the companies are forcing you to buy new car every third year, I feel I I, I have a Maybe I'm wrong, but maybe I'm too 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 pessimistic. But I think that our society is still not not ready for these more uh, philosophical questions or ideological questions. Because ad advertisement yeah. uh, don't sell us only the products or services, but the way of life also. So, yeah. in, in Poland, you in the country where you have 14 percent of of unemployment after two million people left to England already. So attacking uh, companies is they it's considered as attacking the uh, employers. So we have be we have to be really caref careful with uh, so-called anti-capital. We are not anti-capitalists, but uh, to criticize capitalism with with the best bad sides that it also has. It's it's still very difficult in Poland. Okay, but still, I don't, I don't want to stick to this question of learning from Las Vegas. But uh, um, I have an, an, another question, which is quite quite close to this issue. Could you could you imagine that our perceptions can change? I'm sure that we are all uh, we all agree with you. We are all absolutely empathetic with you. Then that, that all this is terrible, you know, and it is you you have done a very good work to uh, to 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 strive um, against it. But could you imagine that in twen twen twenty years, uh, in twenty or thirty years, we will have another uh, imp an another look and another impression that we will be able, for example, to romanticize it? And to see, uh, to see in this chaos a, a certain sort of beauty, you know, or to, or to have to have some memories. But I know, uh, so don't know if uh, we have uh, such like you, you icon know, old, iconic places old, in, old in Polish wild cities. Times. Uh, the wild face of Polish capitalism of the 1990s and 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 2000s. Remember how it was. Could you could you imagine that? Uh, that yeah, the, that, I, I that, can that imagine. I think could, could I think it's happening now, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we can uh, see this. Uh, um, uh, this what's happening with uh, Cold War modernism or yeah. even a postmodern yeah. ar architecture. Precisely, yeah. But uh, still, I don't know if we had such an uh, iconic places or such uh, uh, iconic processes uh, which uh, are um, connected with advertising. The intersection of Marszałkowska and Aleja Jerozolimskia, the central central square in Warsaw, is absolutely iconic, isn't it? Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> uh, yeah, but it's, so it is. Th this is this is something that I couldn't imagine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you give the example, which is really hard. <laughs> how 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 would you react if someone comes up with the proposal to recognize this place as a historical landmark? Uh, because of its iconic uh, and symbolic <laughs> nature, as a sort of um, uh, witness of the, yeah, as I as I called it, of the wild face of Polish capitalism post 1989, uh, would it would it be unthinkable to you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this kind of advertisement, no. But um, we have. Uh, or to recognize this, uh, in pod uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, I to, 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 uh, but to protect it as a monument. But we have now in Museum of Modern Arts in Warsaw the exhibition which is called uh, uh, Typo Polo, which is about. Uh, Typo typography yeah. from the 90s, this kind of uh, making uh, shop signs by uh, by the owners, and uh, something like uh, like this kind of uh, of signs and uh, advertisement boards as uh, was uh, near the pyramid mm -hmm. there. So uh, this kind of uh, sentiment, I guess, it's vivid, but mm -hmm. uh, but still. Uh, this place that you that you mentioned, it's 
I don't know if it's uh, <laughs> if it's really 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 Perhaps iconic or. Perhaps you are too close. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> okay. Uh, I asked my friend from Estonia because Estonia is maybe one of examples from Eastern Bloc that it really looks okay. It, 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 the architecture is is, is good. The uh, adverts are limited, and I asked my friend from Estonia what what does she think when she is uh, passing Poland, and she says, you know, after clean Estonia, to see this, it's really a big tourist experience. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and we have uh, two, two, two people in our association, one from Holland, one from Canada, and they say, uh, said exactly the same. When, we, when they came to, to Poland, it was like, wow, colors, oh my God, it's, it's, uh, it's something different from our boring, uh, clean public spaces. <laughs> but... Uh, now they are in our association, so... <laughs> <laughs> so Congratulations. Okay, is there anyone who would like to ask another question or who would like to conclude? <laughs> no conclusion, but uh, I, when you started, I thought about uh, Catholicism uh, yeah, and, uh, and advertisement. Um, I think there is a relationship, but uh, when at the end I came to the point, uh, um, all the um, places which are uh, from the churches um, are not uh, touched by advertisement. Uh, is that right? I, I think so. And all the places which are documents of uh, the cultural memory, so the places, the cities which are reconstructed and everything, is not touched by the and by the advertisement. So, is there a, um, a sacred space um, uh, of memory and of um, of uh, Catholicism, uh, which is out of this area? Area, and how does it relate to each other? Um, I think it's it could be an interesting question about the um, the social structure um, in Poland. Mm -hmm. Um, we 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 want uh, to be such places where uh, where uh, advertising advertisements are, uh, should be strictly prohibited. But um, in fact, uh, we have a problem with this uh, in Poland also, and there are advertisements in the cemeteries or near the monuments or near near the crosses uh, along the road. So. Um, there isn't uh, any sacrum in advertisement in Poland, I guess. <laughs> it's, it's, it's quite... There isn't. Uh, there, it's not. There, is not, there is not any sacrum. Uh, and it's quite, uh, quite literally to, to understand. But, but are churches affected by adverts as well? Yes, 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 yes. With banners and so not on. Not that much. No, not uh, like not not all of them. Not even not majority of them, but some. The Polish some church years. is such a wealthy institution that it even uh, it doesn't uh, uh, doesn't yeah, doesn't need the, it. The church uh, creates its own messages and all all own uh, adverts and. Uh, Unfortunately, the main message that is produced by Polish Catholic Church is, is, is something connected with John Paul II, who is the idol, and is, in my opinion, is misused when they want to promote themselves, when they want to collect money for something, when they want to just do anything, they always put the face of John Paul II, and it works. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. Okay. <laughs> last, okay. The very the last question. The Catholic Church knows what good advertisement is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They are colorful and rich. Uh, yeah. Yes. I think that was the idea yeah. of your question okay. as well, yeah? That there is, uh, it is perhaps not by coincidence that Catholic Poland is so full of colorful advertisements, whereas uh, Protestant, strictly Protestant Denmark uh, is absolute, uh, absolutely uh, cleaned, yeah? Okay, th thank you very much for this um, 
as I found, extremely stimulating discussion. Uh, we are certainly not willing to learn from Poland, like to learn from Las Vegas. We are not willing to learn from Poland how to pollute urban spaces, but we have, in this discussion, we have uh, learned a lot from Poland how to strive against this and how to mobilize, is it an English word, how to mobilize um, the public for this um, for these issues and how to uh, raise the public awareness of this problem. So thank you very much for this presentation and we wish you all the best for your further activities. Und Ihnen vielen Dank. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much for your attention. We were a bit uh, anxious if anybody would come here to listen about this story, because from what we see in German streets, it's really much better than what we have. And I was afraid that th this topic is not interesting for you. Uh, but as I see, probably there are different levels of what you are talking about and what, what we are talking about. This, what you have in indoors, we have everywhere. So this is this is the main reason. So it was very stimulating also for us to learn what are your problems because we are very often asking what 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 problems do they have, and now we know. Thank you very much. Ja, vielen Dank nochmal. Und eine gute eine gute Nachricht zum Schluss: Das Gespräch muss nicht zu Ende sein, denn hier ist weiterhin offen. Wie Sie sehen, wird hinten eine Bar aufgebaut mit einigen Häppchen und Getränken, und Sie sind herzlich eingeladen zu bleiben und mit unseren Gästen ins Gespräch zu kommen.